fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Benny Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Did you ever talk to your grandmother or your mother about what it used to be like to bake an angel food cake? Before there was a Betty Crocker angel food cake mix, that is. Well, they used to have to take 13 eggs and separate the whites from the yolks. Can you imagine all that bother? Over a dozen eggs. Angel food cakes took hours then. And I guess that's why they only baked them for very, very special occasions. But now, you can have big, delicious angel food cakes all the time. Mmm. -hmm. It's so easy when Mom uses Betty Crocker angel food cake mix. That's the mix with the whites of 13 farm fresh eggs right in the package. Mom just adds water and your favorite flavoring for a perfect cake. Angel perfect every time. Cake after cake after cake. A high light every day is party day kind of cake. And it's guaranteed perfect by Betty Crocker of General Mills, Minneapolis. I hope Mom bakes lots of Betty Crocker angel food cakes at your house. They're so melt in your mouth good. With his faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Late one afternoon, the Lone Ranger's Indian friend Tonto entered Marshal Jack Forbes' office in Copper City in northern Texas. Oh, Marshal Forbes. Yeah, who's that? Well, I'll be a two-toed grasshopper. Uh, uh, Tonto, how in the world are you? Oh, me, fine. What? Where's the Lone Ranger? Oh, him in hills, north of town. Well, I reckon the two of you have come to this part of the country to see your old friends, Clarabelle Hornblow and Thunder Martin, eh? No, we not come to see Clarabelle Thunder this time. Oh? We come this way, look for crook named Dade Shelby. Shelby? Ah. Shelby? I never heard of the critter. Well, him wanted for murder in Kansas. We trail him long time. You must have if you followed him this far. We lose trail two day ago. Masked man, hope find killer's trail in hills. Him send me here to tell you be on lookout for fella with big scar cross forehead. Uh, where'd you lose his trail, Tonto? On north side of Sunflower River. Haven't been able to pick it up since, huh? No. Well, if he's a killer, the sooner he's captured, the better. Mm, that's right. I'll tell my deputies to be on the lookout for this Shelby fella. Then I'll ride to the Lone Ranger's camp with you. All three of us will look for the rat's trail. Isn't that good? Just give me time enough to talk to the boys, and I'll be right with you. Meanwhile, Thunder Martin drew rein at Clarabelle Hornblow's kitchen door and hurried inside. The ex mule Skinner's face was flushed with excitement. Hey, Clarabelle! Clarabelle! I'm rich! I'm stuck in rich! What'd you say? I found gold, Clarabelle. My luck's changed. I'm through working for wages. I'm going to be a millionaire. Hold on, Thunder. Now take it easy. It's the greatest thing that ever happened to me. When I saw that gold, Will I... you quiet down, you mutton-headed idiot? Huh? What's wrong? A feller named Dave Shelby he came to the door a little while ago asking for a place to rest and a meal. Yeah. He lost his horse and gear crossing Sunflower River. Where is he? In the next room, you big mouth jughead. I bet he heard every word you said. Well, doggone. You should have warned me. I would have if I'd had a chance. Let's step outside so we can't be overheard. Yeah. talking out here. Now, where'd you find the gold thunder? Down by the creek about five miles from here. You'd 
don't know a doggone thing about prospecting. Uh, but if you're right about this, if you really have found gold, you'd better keep quiet about it. Don't worry. I'm not going to risk losing the strike to a claim jumper. I'll put my horse in the corral. Good. I'll go inside and put supper on the table. When the food was on the table, Thunder roused Dade Shelby. The killer came to the table and wolfed his meal in silence. Then when Thunder left the house to take care of chores outside, and Clarabelle cleared the kitchen table, the killer drew his gun. Hey, what's the idea? Don't make a sound or I'll shoot. Hey, have you gone loco? Sit down in that chair beside the table and be quick about but, 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 it. Do as you're told. And don't try to call for help. Because if Thunder Martin walks in here, I'll what? shoot him. Why, you no good ornery skunk. This is the thanks I get for taking you in and feeding you. Shut up. Now put your hands behind the chair off, Tom. You won't get away with this. Oh, my arm. Keep quiet. There. Now I'll gag you with this towel. Oh, no, you don't. I told you to shut up. That'll keep you quiet. Now I'll tie your feet. Hold still. Whether you like it or not, you're here to stay. Well, the chores are all done, Tad. Get your hands up, Thunder. Hey, what's the idea? Get your hands up or I'll shoot the woman. Now, all right. Don't hurt Clarabelle. Keep your hands high till I get your gun. That's it. So what are you after? The gold you found today. Huh? You're going to show me where it is. Sit. Then you overheard me when I came into the kitchen, huh? That's right. I needed a meal, so I decided to wait a while before pulling the gun. You'll never get away with this. If you lead me to the gold, you won't get hurt. If you don't, you'll stop lead. Get going. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger, Toto, and Marshal Forbes found Dade Shelby's runaway horse quietly nibbling grass a short distance from Sunflower River. After examining the animal's tracks, the masked man and Toto realized what had happened. Soon afterwards, they found Dade Shelby's trail heading south on foot. Darkness was falling when they set out to follow it. Come on, Silver, the mouse come. Some distance south of the Manhunters, Thunder Martin tried desperately to think of a way to escape Dade Shelby. The creek where he accidentally discovered gold was west of the ranch, but Thunder headed east, hoping to meet a rancher or friend who could help him. After nearly two hours' travel, Dade exclaimed, That gold can't be this far from the ranch. Uh, how do you know where it is? I think you're stolen. And what's worse may be trying to lead me into a trap. You wanted me to lead you to the gold? I know a sure way to find out where it is. Uh, We're going back to the ranch. For what? You and Clarabelle Hornblow stepped out of the kitchen so you could tell her more about the gold without being overheard. You must have told her where you found it. Oh, Clarabelle don't know where it is. (laughs) I think she does. She'll talk, too, to save your hide. Turn that critter around. We're going back to the house. Get around. Come on, round, boy. Get her. Get ranch house, Clarabelle had been struggling with the ropes that held her. By rocking her chair back and forth, she managed to move it close to the stove. Twice she burned her wrists painfully against the hot metal, but at last the singed rope broke as she strained at it. With her hands free, she took the gag from her mouth. Now, now if I can untie my feet. As soon as her feet were free, she hurried to the corral. Her favorite horse was gone. Why, that no good thieving polecat must have it. Clarabelle quickly saddled another horse. That ain't easy. The sooner I get to Marshal Forbes, the better. Get up! Get up there! We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Boxer Ben fights hard and fair, so in the ring you kids beware. He's dynamite because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Cheerios.
Cheerios, the cereal everybody loves. No other cereal looks like Cheerios. It's shaped like little letter O's. No other cereal tastes like Cheerios. It's the only ready-to-eat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. No other cereal is like Cheerios. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Have Cheerios every morning. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue... Clarabelle traveled cross-country to save time, and more than once regretted being without her Palomino. His critter is as skittish as a two-week-old calf. Get up! Get up there! As she neared the main trail, it was necessary to descend a steep slope. Easy, easy there, easy. The sleek black horse balked. <laughs> Come on! Get up! Get up there! Clarabelle coaxed, cajoled, and scolded. Finally, the horse started downhill. Then, without warning, the animal lost its footing. Oh, easy, Help! Thrown from the saddle, Clarabelle pitched headlong to the bottom of the rocky slope, where she struck her head against the small boulder and lay still. signaled a halt and spoke to Marshal Jack Forbes and Tonto. Jack, did you hear someone call for help? I thought I did. Me hear it. It sounded like woman. Come on, we'll investigate. Come on, sir. Let's go. A few minutes later, the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and the Marshal approached the still figure lying at the bottom of the slope. Oh, easy, oh, easy, 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 Tonto, it's Clarabelle. Right, unconscious. Looks like she took a header down the slope. She must have struck her head when she fell. Oh, that bad cut on forehead. The masked man reached for Clarabelle's wrist to take her pulse. He saw the burn she had suffered freeing herself of the ropes. How bad she hurt, mister? I don't know, Marshal. Her wrists have been burned. It looks as though they had been tied. Uh, she could have fractured her skull. I don't think so. But she may have suffered a concussion. Uh, me bandage cut and head. Bandage her wrist, too. Uh uh-huh. Me fix him. I don't savvy what she's doing out at this hour of the night. Traveling cross-country over places you ought to have more sense in the tackle. She's not as young as she used to be. She must have been. Maybe you'd better a doctor come. Him know how bad Clarabelle hurt. I think you're right, Toto. Well, the rafter H isn't far from here. I'll go there and ask Thunder Martin to bring a wagon here so she can be moved. Good idea, Jack. Steady there. Easy. What about the doctor? Paul will ride to town for the doctor. I'll be back soon with Thunder. Get up there. Come on. Easy, stop. Easy, come on. We hope that will not hurt the hand. I'll stay with her till you return, Toto. That's good. Get him up. Come on. Tonto hurried toward town, and Marshal Jack Forbes rode toward the Raptor H. Thunder Martin and Dade Shelby approached the ranch from the opposite direction. The scar-faced killer kept Thunder covered and watched him closely. They dismounted at the back door and entered the kitchen. Inside. Don't try a fast move, Thunder. Don't worry. Hey. Clarabelle's gone. Gone. She got away. There, the ropes are tied her with. Yeah, somehow she managed to burn them off. I'll bet she's gone for help. That means your scheme to get my gold won't work. You'll be in real trouble. Hey, I hear a rider. Yeah. Heading this way. <laughs> I told you Clarabelle went for help. Maybe that's Marshal Forbes coming to get you. I'm not caught yet. As Dade spoke, he swung his gun barrel to the side of Thunder Martin's head. The big man slumped to the floor unconscious. I can't and that rider, too, so I'll tie your feet and gag you. That way you'll not make trouble. Dade Shelby worked fast. He tied and gagged Thunder and dragged him into the next room, seconds before Marshal Forbes drew rein in the moonlit yard. From a place near the open door, Dade watched the lawman dismount. 
Suddenly, the moonlight glinted on the star pinned to the marshal's vest. Thinking Clarabelle had told the law about him, the killer cursed softly. As the marshal hurried to the kitchen door, he fired. <laughs> Bottom of the slope, where the Lone Ranger waited with Clarabelle Hornblow, the buxom ranch owner groaned softly. Oh, oh. Take it easy, Clarabelle. Wh- where? We found you here a short time ago. Mister, is it really you? Yes, Clarabelle. Why, I thought I was dreaming. Not old Marshal Forbes and I found you. What happened to your I wrist? I burned him trying to get the ropes off. Oh, you sure turned up at the right time, Mister... Thunder and I need your help bad. Who tied you? A scar-faced critter who came to my place afoot asking for me. I didn't want to turn a fella away who's down on his luck, a so scar-faced I... scar-faced man. Is a scar across his forehead? How'd you know? He's wanted for murder. What? Oh, great sakes, alive. Hot and I have been following him for some time. He's at my place now, or somewhere around the place. He captured Thunder and me. And if he's a killer, oh, poor Thunder. Tell me, did he rob you? He wants to steal Thunder's gold claim. Mister, you got to do something, please. Please save poor Thunder. Marshal Forbes is on his way to the ranch now. Oh, this critter's smart. He might be able to fool the marshal. Fool him long enough to get the drop on him, then kill him. Clarabelle, I, I don't want to leave you. I went to town to get Dr. Simpson. I'm not feeling first rate, but I'll be a whole lot better if I know you're on your way to the ranch to help Thunder. I'll be all right here. Do you have a gun? No. I have a spare one in my saddlebag. I'll leave it with you. Then you'll go to the ranch? Yes. Tonto will return with the doctor soon. By the time the Lone Ranger reached the Rafter H, Marshal Forbes managed to free Thunder Martin. The big mule skinner was bandaging the lawman's wound when the masked man dismounted at the back door. As briefly as possible, Thunder explained what happened. I planned to go after that rattler as soon as I finished fixing the marshal's wound, mister. Shelby gunned me and rode away from here as if the devil himself were after him. He has good reason to hurry away. He'll hang if he's caught. He's trying to reach the border. I'll go after him. He's riding Clara Bell's Palomino. That takes care of your wound, Marshal. I'll go with the Lone Ranger. I don't think he'll need help, but Clarabelle does, Thunder. Ah. She's been hurt, thrown from her horse. We'll have to take a wagon to the bottom of Dead Man's Slope to get her. Torn between his loyalty to Clarabelle and his desire to see Dade Shelby captured, Thunder reluctantly agreed to harness a team to a buckboard. A few minutes later, he and the wounded lawman left the ranch. Get up there! Get him off! to the south. The Lone Ranger's great white horse raced across the plains after Dade Shelby. The outlaw's trail was clear and easy to follow in the brilliant moonlight. The powerful stallion responded with a sustained burst of speed, maintaining a pace that brought him closer and closer to the fleeing killer. Presently, the masked man saw Dade ahead. The mighty silver began to close the gap separating them. Dade heard the thundering hoofbeats and turned to look over his shoulder. You're finished, Dade! Dade recognized the masked man as the Lone Ranger. In sudden panic, he snatched his gun from his holster. Turn back or I'll kill you! I've followed you all the way from Kansas. Do I for it! The frightened killer fired hastily. His shot was wide. I'll take you! Not unless you stop to take aim! The Lone Ranger counted the shots. When the killer's gun was empty, he brought the racing silver close to the Palomino. Then he grabbed Shelby. Come here, you! Both men hit the ground as Silver and the well-trained Palomino slowed to a halt. The Lone Ranger leaped to his feet. On your feet, Dave. Don't shoot me. I'm not armed. I'm out of ammunition. I have a new score to settle with you, killer. What are you talking about? Clarabelle Hornblow and Thunder Martin are friends of mine. Uh, Friends? Yes, that's right. Clarabelle's wrists are burned. She suffered a fall. Now, wait a minute, mister. I didn't know... You're due for a beating. I know. The killer's mouth gaped. He stepped back as the Lone Ranger stepped forward. You... His fist hit the point of Dave's chin. That's the beginning. A minute ago, you were going to kill me. No, I've got no gun. Use your fist. Forced to fight, Dave swung. Hey, put... The 
blow missed the masked man's chin and struck his shoulder. The killer followed it with a hard jab that hit its mark. <laughs> then, before he knew what happened... I'll take it! The ranger drove a fist into his stomach as Dade slumped forward. Now then! Another blow hooked his chin. The killer went down. Now, while you're unconscious, now tie your hands and make sure you're disarmed. Then we're going back to the rafter eight. It was nearly daybreak when the Lone Ranger reached the ranch with his prisoner. Doc Simpson was there with Clarabelle, Marshal Forbes, Thunder Martin, and Tonto. The masked man offered to help the wounded lawman take Dade to jail. I can sure use the help, mister. Doc's going with me, and if you travel as far as the edge of town with it... I'll be glad to, Marshal. Uh, we wait here, Kimosabe. All right, get going, Dave. I'm going. I hope they hang that skunk. Uh, Clarabelle say... Him try to steal gold from you. That's right, Tonto. I, I struck it rich. Say, uh, I have a little gift for you and the Lone Ranger. Huh? What that? I want you two to have the first of the gold I took from my claim. I've got some right here in my pocket. I didn't show it to Clarabelle because I wanted to give it to you and the mass man. And that's plenty nice, Thunder. Well, here you are. This is for you and the others for the mass man. Oh, you think this? Gold? Of course it's gold. Look at the color of it. Oh, this not gold. Huh? We see this stuff plenty times. Lone Ranger say it iron or copper pyrites. Pyrites? <laughs> Fool's gold thunder. No, thunderation. Me sorry, thunder. You maybe not want to take my word for it. Why, you know a doggone sight more about it than he does, Tonto. Fool's gold. Oh. oh, don't feel so bad, Thunder. That killer was a bigger fool about it than you were. Huh? He was planning to jump a worthless claim. And all he got for his trouble was a trip to the gallows. Thanks to the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.